Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and you can find out more information about me, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Just look up for Wake Up Missoula. There's lots of things I'm going to be talking about today. I got some weather, some news items. I got flagship Friday video of the week. I got a couple of those in the bank for the next couple weeks until I run out, and then I'll have a bunch of uh, summer camp videos I'll be showing for your Fridays for your uh, kind of like your Saturday, your Friday fill of kids creative uh, outlet that they use MCAT for. But let's start off with a little bit of weather. I uh, Okay, so the weather, it's looking rainy. It's been kind of like teasing rain for the last couple weeks for sure, but it's been really nice this whole week. So you know how like the work week is super nice and then the weekend's like really crappy, so you really can't go out because you're basically stuck indoors all week long. Well, it's kind of like Basically, it's exactly like that this weekend as well. Um, today, you have that 70 to 100% chance of showers likely happening today. That high is going to be 59 degrees. Your low is going to be 33 degrees tonight with a 60 to 20% chance of rain. It's going to be mostly sunny on Saturday, so you can expect those uh, kind of like morning um, little a little cloudy, but it'll be mostly sunny in the morning, and then we'll start getting um, more and more showery throughout the night. And then Sunday, it looks like it's going to rain a 30-40% chances of rain. Monday, it's going to start be some more rain. I'm pretty sure by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week, in the middle of the week, will probably be the nicest part of the week, and you guys will be stuck again with some more rain on the weekend. We won't have any of those extreme hot temperatures coming up pretty soon, so you can enjoy some of the spring showers that will be happening throughout the next couple of days. Um, speaking of weather, so uh, if you don't remember, a couple uh, in back in February, maybe late January, around that time, that the Silver Theater, um, which used to be the World Theater back in the day, um, their roof collapsed, and now that the owner of the Silver Theater is suing the former owner for the place for selling him a defective building with a, uh, with a building with a defective roof, basically. During the uh, more snow-packed uh, winters we've had in Missoula, Silver Theater was slated uh, to host shows of the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, but just before, almost like a week before they had this screening, the roof collapsed. Uh, people had to be evacuated because they noticed that a couple of things were starting to um, be kind of weird. So they evacuated. Almost 15 minutes or so later, the roof actually collapsed. Um, but here's the kicker. Um, when former owner removed the potential roof collapsing snow back in the winter of 96, he actually dams the roof with the blades of a snowblower. He basically took a snowblower, used it to get rid of the snow that was on the roof, also damaging the roof, which had uh, leakage. But um, the repair, uh, they, they replaced it with a waterproof uh, repair roof, which had a 20-year guarantee, which ended in December of 2016, which is just last December. Um, so... The, anyways, the property was sold for uh, $300,000 um, without this express knowledge of a defective roof or the issues that they had with the roof back in 96 until it actually happened. And from that, the lawsuit uh, states that the foundation wasn't informed of the de defects until after the roof collapsed. The suit names the church and directors Ramsey, John uh, Brakefield, John Newell, and uh, Gray Sanks, all of Missoula, Missoula County, neither Ramsey or... Uh, um, mayor returned calls uh, seeking comment by deadline on Thursday. Uh, and of course, I got this from the Missoulian and um, some uh, word of mouth from the people who do the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. Um, in the state news, um, Trump Jr. Um, visited Helena the other day and emphasized that the Second Amendment is more important than how he likes hunting with Gene Forte and the gang. Uh, both Trump Jr. and Gene Forte encourage people to return their ballots which went out at the uh, start of the month. The election, which will be on Thursday, could hinge on voter turnout. Turnout for special elections is typically low, and Republicans are concerned about Democratic momentum sparked by the frustration with Trump's election last d November. Um, Mark Girder, Gridler pay, uh, paid the entry fee of $10 and stood quietly until Donald Trump Jr. took the stage. Um, early in his speech, uh, Girdler uh, shouted at Trump Jr. asking for his father's tax returns. Um, um, while the crowd booed and volunteers escorted uh, him out, Trump Jr. said that the returns that the release showed his father paid more than Senator Bernie Sanders and former President Barack Obama. Um, when asked why he paid um, um, the money to see candidates he disagreed with, Girdler said he feels compelled to point out the uh, 
the hypocrisy of millionaires to say that they'll take care of the little people. Um, several protesters did line up at the road outside the driveway, but several dozen parked along the highway a half a mile away and held signs in support of Rob Quist, ones questioning Gianforte's wealth and his ability to relate to Montanans and in opposition to the GOP's health care proposal. Many of these protesters said that the Trump administration encouraged them to be involved beyond voting each cycle. So um, at the end of April, um, several hundred uh, turned out for rallies with Trump Jr. in Kalispell, Hamilton, Billings, and Bozeman. Quit's campaign has uh, said um, former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, who bested Clinton in the June pr um, primaries in Montana, uh, will visit the state on behalf of Quist. Uh, of course, the date is unknown at this time. And then once again, I just want to remind people that get out the vote. Um, whoever you're voting for, you're more than encouraged to get out the vote. Ballots are already out, um, but the election day is on May 25th, which I believe is on a Thursday. So just be aware of that. But also you can always co go down a little bit earlier and see about getting an early ballot if you haven't gotten in a mail-in ballot as well. But I got my mail-in ballot. I send my vote. Um, Yep. So in national news, uh, guess what, nerds? Uh, bullying is down among national public school system when it um, when it comes to slapping, hitting, shoving, or any other ver verbal or cyberbullying. It went from 28.9% of kids in schools back in 2005 survey to 13.4% uh, in 2014 survey. Uh, many of the kids uh, had the same opinions about their schools in general, but most kids think they're, school, uh, they're too cool for school a lot of times. Um, so Ron Avi Astor of the University of Southern, Calif uh, Southern California, who is not involved in the research, points out, while the data comes from just one state, these findings are not isolated. They are part of a broader trend. There's, uh, and they, and they, he said, there's a strong international data showing these reductions not only in schools, but in communities and families. Avi Astor s uh, says, um, child abuse, violence, uh, murder rates, uh, they've hit record lows. There's something normative happening in societies, not just schools. Um, with kids being more engaged with one another along with parental involvement, it is clear that many positive social trends are happening, but then again, it's hard to be bad when your parents are watching every movement move you make. Ex uh, ex um, expect uh, watching my show. Um, it, well, of course, uh, you know, um, except for my mom and dad who don't watch the show, so they don't really. Uh, my dad's retired. And he doesn't watch the show. But anyways, that's, that's more for me. And I got a lot of this information from NPR.org. Um, uh, that joke kind of fell flat. So I'm just going to kind of end it there and just be like, move on with my life. Uh, okay, so um, let's talk about some MCAT news. If you want more information, um, you, you go to NPR.org, you go to Mazillion.com, and you go to the BillionsGazette.com for all those news stories and, and find out more about what's happening in your state, your local uh, city, and of course, the national uh, circuit. Um, if you want to find more information about my show, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write out twice. Be sure to subscribe, like on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. You can also go to mcat.org to find out more information. I'll have your local government city council report later on in the show, but this is a great way to get involved with MCAT, whether that be our summer camps, our uh, produce your own program, but also have MCAT produce a program for you of an event that's coming up, which is under How Do I? and you click on request event recording and we will have uh, a bunch of new programs that will air on our channel 189 uh, mo most of our government channel is on 190 uh, but you can also access them online at mcat.org but without further ado here's all the new programs you can watch this weekend and when I come back I want to talk about all those movies that are coming out this week what are you, what are you gonna get your face painted as? A butterfly. A uh, butterfly? Like your whole face a butterfly or a little part of your face? Um, my whole face. Oh. You know, Know Your Farmer is a benefit for Spirit at Play, but I really think it's um, a benefit for anyone as a community member. You just really don't have this opportunity often to see, have access to this many, you know, beekeepers, um, knitters, gardeners, um, different livestock animals. So it's great. It's a great opportunity. Basically, it's my mission is to connect children with their food sources. So I'm hoping that they'll take away take that away too. And a sense of fun.
of our libraries are incorporating spaces and programs that uh, are all centered around hands-on learning because it's found to be very key to how people learn. Um, you can actually, there's a lot of research about this that by reading or hearing a lecture or hearing somebody talk about something, you only retain actually 10 or 20 percent of that content. When you engage in something and actually try and do something together with another person or engage in hands-on learning in some way, create something, make something, that retention goes up to 80 or 90 percent. That's a huge difference and so hands-on learning are a big part of 21st century libraries. Um, when you, you engage all the senses like you see up here on the screen, that uh, retention rate it goes up. Thank you. When those, when the, the Bundys and their friends took over the Malheur uh, Wildlife Reservation uh, last January, roughly, um, what was going on was in some ways people standing as representatives of the first idea that nature really belongs to people who dig saleable stuff out of it and run cattle on it and um, They'll make it make it productive. Running up against both the administrators and experts of the what I call the Roosevelt Pinchot kind of. They move them up, loaded them on trucks, hauled them down the highway. And Harold Schmidt was in charge of hauling the trucks hauling, and Larry Smith, the other crew foreman, was arranging them in twin cricks. So they build up the twin cricks. And at twin cricks. This is now out at the fort. That's the slide loader. The woods terminology was a slide ass. It's, it's out at the fort. The library car is out at the fort and the little uh, doodle bug thing that hauled the loggers is out at the fort. When they shut Twin Creeks down in 86, this building, we had been in use they had us tow that up the road, push it over the bank, and burn it. All right, so that was a little bit of uh, history uh, from the Bonner Milltown um, uh, area. So they, it's called ACM Logging Days, so you guys can check out that and more by logging on to MCAT.org. But let's talk about some movies that are coming out right now. If you haven't already heard, if you haven't already seen, uh, here are some of the brand new movies that are coming out, starting with another uh, Arthur King Arthur movie, another King Arthur movie that they're doing now. Oh, anyways, uh, from the creators of movies where they spend lots of movies that will never will inevitably go down the toilet comes a flop of a movie uh, called Legend of the Sword. Uh, we're choosing between a bunch of new movies and rewatching Guardians of the Galaxy, or uh, you put off watching Guardians of the Galaxy last week because you thought it would, it would be too crazy, which it actually was. Um, uh, so anyways, Legend of the Sword is about King Arthur. Enjoy. Next up, we got... Snatched. From all those kidnapping um, taken films comes a lighthearted kidnapping film starring Amy Schumer and Goldie. Where have you gone, Han? Um, this mother daughter true uh, duo must survive their tropical adventure together, and nothing brings two people together like a kidnapping and keeping them in a cell for a good chunk of the movie, followed by them escaping and having some like, uh, epic showdown with a faceless run of the mill villain who you won't remember. Of course, anyways, this movie is called Snatched if you care. Um, plus, you know, if, I'm sure there's a lot of Amy Schumer fans out there and some people who haven't seen Goldie Hawn in a while. Um, up next, enjoy another pro-military war that pits, over, uh, that pits um, overconfident military officers in a situation where they must use the wall to protect them from a sniper. Uh, I watched like 15 seconds of a trailer, so, you know, bear with me on this. It's called Pre-Critic, not like, oh, I'm going to watch the movie and then I'm going to critique it. Um, John Cena is in the movie and so is the kid that everyone recognizes but is like okay whatever he's a good actor just not really that memorable Aaron Johnson or Aaron Taylor hyphenated uh, Johnson if you like hyphenations Sarah Michelle Gellar and Sarah Parker Jessica Parker w didn't star in this movie um, this is a, a Middle Eastern basically a war propaganda film also may seem like it's also a pro wall film but it's let's not really get into that so anyways uh thus ends the pre-critic and enjoy some art clips followed by some city council
today's City Council theme is um, all about uh, the new Fort Missoula Regional Park, how we're going to pay for it, how what what's going to be the maintenance cons costs, and all that stuff. Short answer, uh, sponsorship. But here is the long um, version of it, um, courtesy of Donna Gockler. So here is uh, the Department uh the City of Parks and Re Recreation Department, the ability to continue to serve those users um, displaced during the Phase 2 construction of the Fort Missoula Regional Park and to provide uh, the related project services as noted in the attached agreement. The term of the interim agreement is January 1st, 2017 through January 31st, 2017. The interim agreement will be replaced by the subsequent agreement as described in the 2015 interlocal agreement. Here is Donna Glockler to explain a little bit more about that because that's more of like the detail stuff. So here's Donna Glockler. Uh, referendum on the ballot, there was a lot of discussion about how the facilities would be maintained upon completion of construction. There was um, considerable discussion on assuring that for the, both the city and the county back and forth that it would be indeed managed as one large park and that most citizens really don't care what side of the line they're on. They just care that they have a great park that's well managed and well maintained. And so there's a lot in that um, 2015 interlocal agreement that talks about uh, assuring each other, if you will, uh, commissioners and council and the people you represent, that the partnership will continue. And that there's no such thing as uh, the city deciding to sublet a portion of their piece or the county deciding to sublet a portion. We're fully into this all the way. All right, so that was Donna Gockler. She is the uh, the director of Parks and Recreation. Um, Gockler talks about funding um, certain events that would be hosted at the Fort Missoula Regional Park, and this is what she had to say. The services programs, marketing events that we hold on site, for example, even the grand opening, was paid for um, by sponsors. And so that's an operating budget that stands by itself. It does not pay for the ongoing daily maintenance for us to go out and just use the park as is. It does pay when there's a big um, strikers tournament. We have to provide additional services and lines and all of that. Then they're paying those costs. So just, I want to give that little bit of background because this can be extremely confusing why there's three budgets for one park. Then, um, All right, so that uh, um, so let we're, we're, we'll dive into a little bit more about the funding and whatnot. Donna explains that the part uh, that the part is made up of city county partnership, which you already said, which uh, the Parks and Rec Department will handle in terms of maintenance and use through the budget. So city parks and recreation will manage the Fort Missoula Regional Park as a whole, even though like many different entities basically kind of own a lot of different properties on the Fort Missoula area as well. University of Montana. Um, uh, wanted to build a parking lot up there, but there was uh, a lot of uh, things, uh, some background, um, some things with the uh, Big Sky High School using the field for FFA type educational learning things. So the University of Montana kind of put their sites somewhere else for parking and whatnot. There, there was just a lot of moving parts when it came in terms of what the space was going to be used for. But that was one of the, um, just kind of a little background on there as well. Um, Donna Gockler, uh, um, reflects on the sustainability because uh, with the new park, they're trying to figure out ways to help with the cost savings of the new park, which we will talk about right now. Um, so as you know um, better than I, uh, the city council has a strong initiative as it relates to sustainability and climate. And the county has a strong initiative as it relates to sustainability and climate. And the park itself is trying to um, score as high as we can on sites, which is the landscape version of LEED. So we had an opportunity in January and had to make a decision in January whether or not we would go um, from sodium vapor lights to LED lights on the um, softball diamond five plucks. And um, the reason we had to make that decision so early in the process is because we had to make the decision while they're doing um, excavation, underground work, to determine what the support base would be so that the right um, support was there for the right posts. And the posts change depending on what lights you hang off of them. So in order to make that decision, we did make the sustainable decision to go with LED. Um, it has a six-year payback on those softball lights. And because um, 
we don't have a final number, so there's a lot to figure out here. Uh, one is we need to get a final determination on the energy rebate. So the lights are estimated to be around $203,000 in round numbers. The energy rebate is estimated to be around $50,000. And we still have opportunity to charge fees to the users of the lights. Um, at a rate that's appropriate to regain some of that. But in order to insert the um, change order early enough in the project so that we could build the right um, foundation to get the right posts in, we had to assure or guarantee that there's a funding source for that. All right, so that was Donna Gockler, and she's talking about how uh, some of the difficulties when it comes to sustainability, but also how uh, it's um, how things are looking in terms of implementing the sustainability um, long term versus short term. So that was kind of like the end of your parks and conservation um, um, informational uh, city council report. I don't know why I said informational thing, but anyways, uh, you can find more information by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us uh, website, which is wonderful, and it's a great way to get engaged with the Missoula community through their government and how to get involved with city government. So if you have a bunch of opinions and you want to be heard, this is the place to go to be heard. So... Um, that kind of concludes everything that you need to know. I don't have all the answers. I just kind of say um, this is just part of the city council meetings that I just kind of highlight some of the things that are happening, some things that are going to be basically changing the community. But here is a flagship Friday video that has all the answers. Segway. something that they want and they want it soon. What's going on? Oh no! You must know something for them to be after you. Okay, okay. Don't tell anyone. I know the answer to the upcoming finals test. What? How do you know? I just know. He's just lying. He just wants attention. Huh, nerd. Uh, let's just say I know a certain someone that knows a certain... Let's call it a website. Hey! Give me back a cheat sheet. Give me kid. Hmm. This is last warning before I use my secret weapon. Ha, huh, you don't look that tough. What's going on in here? It's me, it's me, me, me to kill me. I'm just Okay, like okay, me. okay, calm down. What do you guys think you're doing? Listen, guys. You're making him very upset. He's a foreign exchange student. You can't just do that to kids. Like, it's really mean to be mean to kids. He's from another country. He doesn't understand our customs. Okay, so you guys, leave him alone. I don't care. Be good. Don't make me come here again. This is your warning. And your only warning. You got that? But we can't do it! 
Hey, hey, that's enough. You guys, I don't want to hear it again. I need those answers. You need to do that test like everybody else. It's the only way you'll get out of here. I am this close to having the highest GP in the seventh grade. I can't mess this opportunity up. I'm sorry that you have to settle on a, a B average. I have kept those grades by doing the work. If you continue on this path, you're not going to like the person you turn into. You don't know who I am? I'm glad that I'm actually taking this path, but this might be the first time I've ever cheated. And I am two weeks away from getting out of this school and getting away from these creatures. Do I have to say this? Oh. If this is the path you choose, you're going alone, because I'm not following. How do the table? We'll handle this. Hi there, friend. And you don't give me the codes, I melt your school. Why would I give you the codes? I'll melt your school. Hey, no, don't mock me loud, so fast. fast. You what? Better hand him over. We're taking this old school. Rock, paper, scissors. Come on! I'm serious! I have an exit. Jumping off the bridge. I'm following your cousin with us. Uh, all I find is. Ha! Erdy got all the codes, you idiots. What? Ow. I'm going to ace the test and make you Americans look very stupid and make your educational student system look very corrupt. <laughs> then I build hydrogen bomb and I'm going to buy little air from some. You may have all the answers, but so will everyone else. No! No! Yeah, I'm accent! Accent! Are you sure you're okay with this? Yeah, there'll be other tests. Does this mean we're friends? No. Accent! What? Accent! Accent! All right, so that was the Flagship Friday video of the week. But now, let's talk about events that are happening this weekend. Let's kick things off with a little bit of uh, trauma for the informed teacher training. So at Mask Studios, this event runs from May 12th to the 14th. This is a trauma-informed teaching training hosted by Freedom of the Island, uh, wait, Freedom on the Inside, Missoula's Jail Yoga Program, and Red w Willow Learning Center. They will bring Yoga Behind Bars, uh, Se um, Seattle's Jail Yoga Program, to Missoula to host a three-day training. This is open to everyone interested in working with a traumatized population. You do not need to uh, work in jails to benefit from this. You do not need to be a yoga teacher. Yoga teachers will get a 17 CE credit with Yoga Alliance, though. So if you are a teacher and you're going to use this for educational purposes, you get credit for it. So be aware of that. George Dennison uh, Celebration of Life. Uh, a couple months ago, um, um, former uh, University of Montana President George Dennison, the one before Royce Engstrom, uh, died from a uh, long-term illness. Um, um, he was the longest, one of the longest serving presidents from 1990 to 2010. The university and the Denison family will honor the enduring impacts of his legacy during the celebration of his life from 4 to 6 p.m. today at the University Center Ballroom. Jane Denison, wife of the late president, um, will, will MC. 
Um, and UM President Sheila Stearns invites the public to attend. Uh, Hellgate Wind Festival is going to be at the Fort Missoula Regional Park. They're doing a whole bunch of Fort Missoula Regional Parks over the weekend as well. But let's start off with a little Feel the Wind out with the fort while you enjoy some... Oh, sorry. Wind instruments, cultural dances, game, kite displays, and demos. Make your own kite and try it out in the field. It's a $5 suggested donation. So it's the, um, at 430 at the Fort Missoula Regional Park. You just go through the main entrance, and you really just can't miss it. I'm, I'm sure they'll meet at the pavilion and everything. MCC presents The Bombers Came with the Moon. It's going to be at St. Anthony's Church at 7.30 p.m. The Missoula County Chorus is excited to present this year's spring concert following the world premiere of local composer Mike Rubarski's um, work in defense of peace. It will feature a full brass ensemble along with 80 voices of choir. Um, Additionally, the choir will feature a, ver a variety of form of American music from the turn of the century and beyond, highlighting ragtime, swing, and, the, and a host of other uniquely American music. Tickets are available at Rock and Rudy's or online. Um, if you go to MissoulaEvents.net, you can find the online link to be there. I'm assuming they'll be selling um, it at. Um, they'll also be selling tickets at the St. Anthony's Church. So it's at St. Anthony's Church, 7:30 p.m. A big choir, brass mix. It's going to be just wonderful, and I know Mike Rosebarski, and he's a great composer. Um, Wizard of Oz, adapted by MCT. It's, it's called an, adapt an adaptation of The Wizard of Oz, and um, MCT is putting it on. It's the last weekend. Go check it out. You have it tonight at 7.30 p.m. You have two shows on Saturday and two shows on Sunday. You have your matinee at 2 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, and then you have your night show at 7.30 and 6.30 on Sunday. But, you know, you can find out more information by going to mctinc.org. Um, but other than that, it's happening. It's a great play. I saw it on the very first Friday, not first Friday last week, but the very first Friday it premiered, which was the last week in April. So um, that pretty much concludes all your uh, highlighted events. But here are some of your educational events. Tiny Tales is happening at the Missoula Public Library, and so is Family Storytime. So if you have kids who are in the process of reading or who like to be told stories in a very creative way, Go to the Missoula Public Library at 10.30 p.m. They're either in the large meeting room or on the Dragon Rug on the main floor of the library. Um, they also have stamp art at Family's First Children's Museum, so get to learn some stamp art. Uh, trauma info. okay, I already said that. You have open hours of the Makerspace at 1 p.m. in the Missoula Public Library. You have Teen Writers Group at 3.30 p.m. in the Missoula Public Library as well. Predator fe Feeding as the Missoula, Missoula Insectarium, where they feed uh, Rosie the Chilean spider. They feed her every other day, uh, and it's uh, quite a sight to behold. Um, <laughs> uh, George, um, George Denison, once again. Montgomery, okay. That's pretty much it for your educational cup type things for events. Here are your late night events. Dead Hipster presents I Love the 90s Dance Party. So if you're a child of the 90s and you grew up listening to all the 90s music, you will, you might enjoy this. And it's going to be at 9 p.m. at the Badlander Western Front. It's going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. It's going to be country music. Cash for Junkers. Cash for Junkers is at the Union Club. They're one of the longest running bands in the in in Missoula in and around Montana. And you guys can enjoy this nice little cover band. It's going to be blues. It's going to be rock and music. And it's just going to be wonderful and great. It's it's the it, defines the genre for sure uh, so it's gonna be at the union club uh shake well graduation bash with uh mark Madrid. uh it's gonna be at the top at lounge it's gonna be soul funk dance music all that sorts of wonderful things um and yeah being that's basically concludes all your events for your friday i have saturday and sunday events because it is mother's day this weekend and i'll have all those events after this art clip provided by our very own rick phillips <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. And if uh, you want to go, if you want to go check out those art installations, it is the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree that a lot of those art students are going to be getting. So it's their BFA art gallery. So it's going to be a whole bunch of uh, potential future artists that will be uh, displaying all their creative works and kind of culminate all of their work they've done and all the hard work they've put into their four-year degree at, for BFA. So um, that's going to be at the Social Science Building until the end of today, or they're probably even taking down some of the stuff as well today because it is uh, the last day for all those college kids to um, basically be there. I mean, like, this is kind of like the last day for finals. There might even be some weird finals happening next week because they do that sometimes, and they can charge you more to stay in the dorms and whatnot. But pretty much they're going to be kicking kids out of the dorms um, this weekend. So... Uh, most of the kids only have uh, barely any chance to kind of go out and do too much things, get too crazy this weekend as well. But here are some of the uh, things that you don't want to miss this weekend, starting with the farmer's market, sat starting Saturday morning, 8 o'clock to about 1, 1 1.30 p.m. Usually everything starts winding down around 1 o'clock, and pretty much all the uh, food vendors have run out of food by then. Uh, farmer's market is back, baby. And it's I'm glad I went there last week. It's great. Lots of people wandering around. It's good to uh, – um, but, of course, if you don't like th all the people – <laughs> it's always good to, to go stay bright and early in the morning and be with the hardcore farmers market people and kind of get it all the way um, before all those families and kids start wandering around and bumping into you. Darn kids, darn kids. Watching Children's Shelter, uh, Bike for Shelter is uh, starting, uh, speaking of kids, uh, is going to do their uh, Bike for Shelter. It's an annual event to help support the Washington Children's Shelter. I had a couple of those guests on last week, uh, Haley and... Um, Oh, man, I'm just, like, blanking on their names right now because the pressure's on. It, when there's pressure, I can't think of names. I'm as bad as my parents. Uh, buckle your helmet and pump up your tires. Washington Children's Shelter and Montana Rail Link invite you to come join the uh, May 13th, um, Saturday, 17th Annual Bike for Shelter at Community, Co Community Medical Center. This family-friendly event includes an 11-mile neighborhood bike ride and a 2-mile fun loop for the little guys and if you ride and you can join in barbecue lunch snow cones music face painting carnival games and more register online today at the washington children's shelter dot org um, he, um and when you're done with that there's going to be a huge rummage sale at the mcps agricultural center vo egg center um a huge rummage sale with a variety of um, items tools hardware clothing gardening tools toys books and more in addition to the annual ffa plant sale will be going on uh, plus, the FFA students will be hosting a petting zoo with their farm animals. 100% of proceeds goes directly to the FFA students. Um, community yard sale and bake sale uh, is going to be open way mindful um, mindfulness community center. Come join for their sixth annual open way mindfulness um, center community yard sale and bake sale, the biggest fundraiser of the year, and enjoy some home baked treats while browsing for your next treasure and one of Missoula's best yard sales. Gluten free and vegan options will be featured. All donations help support the programs at open way um and then another uh then this event's happening from 8 a.m to 3 p.m rain or shine 702 brook street um it's gonna be open way mindfulness center um the next event is the free vein screening so if you have veins that are popping out and you see some um very you think that you might have very coarse veins on your feet um which also uh which also could cause blood clots, which also sometimes can cause heart attacks. We'll be hosting a screening, a free vein screening tomorrow. Um, this and this is going to be happening at the Missoula Surgical Associates. And they discuss such topics as leg discomfort, swelling, and varicose veins, as well as be signs of vascular disease that affects both men and women. You can call them at 542 7525 to reserve your spot in Missoula Surgical Associates. So once again, the number is 542-7525 to reserve your spot to check and see if your veins are um, helpful in um, transporting blood through your body or they're just there to take up blood. Um, breakfast on the Bridge Reserve Street Pedestrian Bridge just opened uh, about a, two weeks ago, and now they're doing a nice little breakfast thing there. Join Missoula in Motion for a recreational breakfast on the new pedestrian bridge over Reserve Street. They'll be setting up a bridge from 9 to 11, handing out free coffee and breakfast treats to all sustainable travelers. Uh, they're also
also be Missoula's On Bicycle MOBI group ride out to Traveler's Rest State Park in Lolo, leaving the bridge at 10 a.m. Ride or walk with them or on your own. A huge thanks to the City Brew for donating the goods. Um, staying healthy while traveling around children, uh, Montana Compounding Pharmacy and Wellness Center. Have you been frustrated uh, by getting sick every single time you travel? It's really because there are so many germs on the airplane and doesn't seem to like you because also um, become ill every time you are around children. It is because children have too many germs. Children are learn what you can do to make your body more <laughs> resilient. I, I was just about to have opinion there, but sturdier and more able to handle new environments. You get to join Dr. Margaret Coffey um, from North Dakota as she leads a discussion and answers your questions. And this is going to be at the Montana Compounding Pharmacy and Wellness Center starting tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. You got Sam, uh, you got Saturday Family Art Workshop, Paint Your Dream House at the Missoula Art Museum. You get to paint your own little dream house and you get a free there. It's a Saturday free family workshop. Enjoy opportunities to work with children on a creative project. Older children may delve into projects on their own, but parents are asked to stay and work with their children who are under seven years of age. Um, Drop-ins for all workshop free of charge f on first, first come first serve basis. Um, and another thing is what is all the buzz about? A Missoula Insectarium is going to be joining a bee finger puppet and learn more about the important groups of pollinator pollinating bees. Um, we they are very familiar with European honeybees, but did you know that the worldwide there are estimated 20,000 species of bees with approximately 4,000 species native to the United States and you can drop by anytime between 12 and 2 p.m. to explore the similarities and differences between the 20,000 different types of honeybees out there. Um, that's basically kind of like everything you need to know about your uh, Saturday events, but here are some of your Saturday music events. So if you guys are planning on going out and about on Saturday, um, you got Shovels is going to be at Free Cycles playing some rock music. Wolf in the Moon is going to be Draftwork mu um, Draftworks Brewing Company doing some music. Honeycomb is doing a graduation party. It's going to be electronic DJ music at Monk's Bar. Um, absolutely. With Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander. Troublesome is the Sunrise Saloon. Mudslide Charlie is going to be at Union Club. And a uh, rock music rock music musician is going to be called In Walks Bud at the Top Hat Lounge, and that's going to be rock music. So that basically concludes your Saturday events. I'm just going to kind of briefly go over Sunday because it is Mother's Day. So if you don't remember that it's Mother's Day, here's another reminder. It's Mother's Day on Sunday. Uh, Cyclo Femme Mother's Day bike ride at the University of Montana starting at 10.45 a.m. Weird time, but yes, it's 10.45 a.m. at the University of Montana. Join Women Bike Missoula for a casual ride around town. This is Missoula's second annual cyclo female bike ride. Meet at Grizz Stadium on campus at 10.45. Uh, ride departs at 11 a.m. And they will be eating ice cream shop and chat and enjoy some street treats. And you're welcome regardless of gender, age, ethnicity, or bicycle preferences. And this is a uh, global celebration of women on Mother's Day each year thousands of women in dozens of cities all over the world get together and ride bikes so once again University of Montana near the uh, Grizz statue on campus and you guys will head out at 11 a.m. you can't miss it it's like right in the middle of the oval uh, Mother's Day tea party for ki for ages um, six to nine at Taste Buds Kitchens Mar moms are the best what better way to create to celebrate the season with the tea party for moms at their budding and their budding chefs join them as they melt in your mouth blueberry scones that are drenched in perky lemon glaze and brew a refreshing sun tea enjoy this fun mother child holiday tradition with the little ways of saying thank you to all the moms do festive tea parties attire welcome just remember they're whipping up their own party menu all for this for all from scratch this class will uh this class is with caregivers 25 dollars per child with one caregiver included so um also, I mean, if you um, don't want to do any of that stuff, do you want to do a bike ride, do you want to do a baking thing, you can also give her a brick for Mother's Day because on Sunday, the Missoula Mercantile is giving away all those raw materials, all those bricks um, from the old mercantile. So get a piece of history and they'll be given away from 1 to 5 p.m. Pretty much they'll probably be gone probably by like 3 or 4 o'clock p.m. Depending upon how many people will want a brick from the Missoula Mercantile. It's going to be on Patty and Main Street. So basically just go where the old mercantile is. You can't miss it. They'll be giving away bricks and everything. So you guys can check that out. They'll have a free ice cream cone and all with the supplies. Um, Sunday at the corner of Main Patty. You can walk, bike on the side. Possible parking will be very limited. And this event is free of charge because it's going to be a brick giveaway. They're giving away bricks. 
So yeah, that basically concludes everything you need to know about what's happening in and around Missoula. If you want more information, you can log on to my website, um, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can find out everything you know that's happening in Missoula by watching any of my videos and past interviews along with um, some fun videos. You can go by clicking on videos. You see my last episode. You can see Dubbin stuff. You can see Teen Talks. Of course, I'll probably have to remove Teen Talks because there won't be another new Teen Talks for a while. Um, so Ailey Fontenot and Hayden Groats will uh, be at Bike First Shelter for the Washington Children's Shelter and then of course my stop animation will be ending pretty soon um, you can find more information about all the events that are happening within MCAT because we'll have our summer camps happening this summer as well as our Saturday drop-ins which this Saturday is our official last um, Saturday drop-in with our party that's happening on May 20th for any of the kids who have attended the previous um, camps as well, which we'll try to have like a nice little party, get together and be like, hey, let's hang out, let's do some films, do some stop animation, and then, you know, It'd be great. So, um, once again, our Saturday drop-in uh, Saturday drop-ins are from 1 to 5 p.m. at MCAT uh, tomorrow. Um, you guys can stop by have some fun, do some stop animation, make a movie, and kind of get um, engaged, have kids get engaged with making movies. So that's what's happening for your Saturday, and um, I just want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. There was definitely a lot to talk about. I thought I was going to have a short show, but I didn't have a short show, um, and you had to t listen to me talk and drone on about some events that are happening, but there are a lot going on, because that's why, you know, if there's a lot going on, I have a lot to talk about. But thanks for joining me, and once again, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.